We're back to Authors Corner on the Total Education Network, TotalTutor.net for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook. And I tell you, the Miami Book Fair. I'm already getting excited to be promoting this all the way up to November, November 17th to 24th. I went the first year. I, I covered the Miami Book Fair. I was there. If I would have the time, I would be there all the time. What a great event it is. It's fantastic. The, the authors are so cool. And you'll see from all the great interviews that I'll do on Author's Corner for the next uh couple of months, so I want to welcome the program. This one is a huge one. Anytime I get to interview a New York Times bestselling author, it's fantastic. So I want to welcome the program, uh, author Jeff Abbott of a thriller, Adrenaline. You're the international bestseller, Jeff. Thanks for calling. Oh, thanks so much for having me on today. Oh, fantastic. So I'm, I'm sure you're excited about the success of your books and always getting to go out and meet your fans in Miami, aren't you? Yes, yeah, I love going to the book fair there. It's it's really one of the best book events in the world. It truly is. And, I mean, anyone who's invited has some sort of just unbelievable uh, success as an author. And they're so talented, and I'm sure you love connecting with all of them. Oh, yeah, and it's, it's great to me. Um, I think the last time that I was there, I got to be on a panel with Jeff Lindsay, who writes the Dexter novels that the, the television show is based on. And um, you get to co- connect with a lot of authors that you don't normally get to see. Um, I got to meet Dave Barry the last time that I was there and Ridley Pearson and just a lot of really top-notch authors. Well, absolutely, and, and it's so cool to kind of connect to them. And anytime you get to meet people that have the same passion you have, and you see where the, how they ended up getting successful, and say, kind of trading ideas, trading. Uh, and again, authors don't have that platform all the time, so fantastic. So I hope everyone gets to check you out at the Miami Book Fair. Let's talk about your book now, uh, the success of your book so far. But this really seems like definitely a thriller, adrenaline. And uh, tell me a little bit about the uh, specifically the background of the book, and we'll get right into like the characters. And we're not going to spoil anything. We're just going to kind of wet people's appetite. Yeah, well, Adrenaline is the um, first book in my series featuring uh, Sam Capra, who is, uh, when the book starts, is a 25-year-old CIA agent working in London. And uh, it was, uh, when it came out a couple of years back, it was the one novel that was picked by both the Today Show and Good Morning America as one of their big summer reads. So that was hugely exciting, you know, as a way to start the series. Um, And when the series starts, Sam is happily living in London. His wife, who also works for the CIA, is expecting their first child. And um, he's at his office giving a briefing when uh, she calls him and asks him to come outside. He does. He sees her in a car with a man he's never seen before. The car races off, and then his office behind him explodes killing all his co-workers, killing the rest of the CIA staff. And he is accused of treason as the sole survivor. And he has to figure out uh, who has taken his wife and why has he been targeted. So Adrenaline was the first book in the series. And then the next book was The Last Minute. And then the book that um, just came out this past summer uh, was Downfall. Well, and wow, I I tell you, just to talk about specifically, this sounds like a movie in itself, the first beginning storyline of this, Jeff. Kind of really a thriller. That's why I guess they have thriller at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, I think you, you, it's a challenge. You've got to grab readers right away with an interesting situation. Um, and, you know, you can come up with a lot of action and drama and stuff like that. But you have to have that happening to characters that readers feel they connect to and can care about. So tell me why Sam? What, what made you create Sam? What was your thought process in that? Well, um, I did some things with Sam that were actually a little bit different. I mean, I'd love shows like 24 and I'd love an alias and I'd love, um, the Bourne films. Um, uh, me too. I love and that. The, yeah, yeah. And, and the James Bond films. Um, but one thing struck me that a lot of the heroes in these stories tended to be 
know, really kind of well established in their lives. They were in their 30s. They're kind of at the peak in 40s. You know, they're kind of at the peak of their careers. They have a lot of experience. And I purposely made Sam much younger. And he's only been with the CIA a couple of years because I didn't want him to necessarily have the complete skill set. I wanted him to be kind of a person who's still figuring out who he is. And then this life, this really good life that he's built is suddenly taken away from him. And he has to figure out how do I get this back? Um, and by the end, this is not a spoiler or anything, but in the course of the series, he comes into ownership of around about 30 bars around the world. Huh. And I, I just came up with that because I figured, okay, he, if he gets kicked out of the CIA, what is his job going to be? How do I get him into new situations? And I had come up with every bad idea on the planet. I would send these to my agent, and my agent would be like, oh, these are not, these, you can do better than this. These are not good ideas. So it was kind of about towards the end of the day, and I kept, because I wanted him to be able to go all around the world on my sketch pad, I had drawn the world. And I guess it was, you know, five o'clock somewhere underneath that I drew a martini glass. And I thought, wow, what if he owned bars? That would be cool. That would be always a way for him to be into new cities, new situations, meet new characters. And um, so that has been a great deal of fun um, because I can go anywhere in the world and go visit bars and get ideas. (laughs) Well, it sounds so exciting and interesting. And that's why, again, you've had success in this, uh, Jeff. When I think about when you talk about the different bars, you could just picture, okay, here's the situation. You know, he's trying to stay out of the CIA trouble and all these other issues. And every time he goes to a different bar that he owns... There's an issue. We all know in all these all these great mysteries out there, how many times are bars involved? Tons. So that's a great idea. Yeah, it, and it's, it's been a lot of fun um, just because people, readers, get kind of invested in what are his bars like. And I've had readers send me photos of bars that they enjoyed visiting or bars that were their neighborhood bars and say, you know, shouldn't Sam own a place like this? Because some of the bars are really nice and some of them are really not nice. So, you know, uh, it's been a lot of fun. And it definitely, it always opens up dramatic situations. You know, sometimes people in bars are either celebrating the good things in their life or they're mourning the bad things in their life. And so it's it's always sort of a new doorway for him to, to go through and find himself in a new story. Absolutely. And, and a new story and then another story and then another story, but always a cliffhanger in so many ways. And I'm sure he feels really betrayed from the beginning. And that's always going to be in the back of his mind. Oh, yeah. I think, you know, he's, he's, uh, I, I, I like heroes who have a lot of, um, I don't want to say emotional baggage, but they have a past and they have a present that they're dealing with because of that past and they have a future that they're trying to get to. And so I think even for Sam being a younger guy, he has a lot that he's carrying. And, you know, you want your heroes, you know, you want them to be great in a gunfight and great in a hand fight and be smart and out talks the villains, but you also want them to have some emotional depth. And, you know, most readers don't know anything about being an international spy, but they know what it is to be hurt by someone that you love. And so that's the way that I, you know, just beyond the action that I try to hook and connect in with the readers. Absolutely. And uh, they love it. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. We want to go in a little bit more into the series again. Do you ever think this is going to be a, a, a something for a, a movie or something or or a show? <laughs> well, actually, Adrenaline has been an uh, option for film. Fantastic. Uh, it's the third of yeah, the first book in the series has been optioned for film, and um, there are some some very well known producers in Hollywood working on the project, and that's kind of all I can say about it right now. But I am, um, you know, when I wrote it, I you know, part of me said, oh yeah, this kind of seems like it could be kind of cinematic. Um, but I wasn't writing it thinking, okay, yeah, the movie, people will just match this up. I mean, the movie is always the movie, and the book is the book, and they're always a little bit different. Um, and my novels, Panic and Collision, are also in development uh, in Hollywood. So we'll see if any of them get made or which one gets made first. So we're going to call you Celebrity Jeff Abbott pretty soon. 
Oh, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, so it's I, just stay here. I stay here and I write the books and I let Hollywood worry what Hollywood is going to worry about. So. I don't know if you did any research on me. I interviewed tons of celebrities. That's why I was saying that for my listeners out there on the network. Uh, and we we kind of talk about this. And I was about to say, Jeff, you don't have it set up. I have connections. I'll connect you to people. But it seems like people <laughs> discovered you already as, as a famous author that you are. And I think it, it just makes you excited to see when you get to see that on the on the silver screen so i'll be saying i knew him when when he's he's gonna be so you'll be like a stephen king or somebody that no untouchable jeff do an interview with me no i only do a cbs (laughs) nbc abc or you know but i only have three minutes for anybody but jeff i think that's fantastic and i'm 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 i feel it's a thriller just talking to you and i could tell that you're taking a lot of the ideas of different movies that are action movies I'm sure you were a fan of action movies growing up as well, right? I am a fan of action movies, but I'm also a big fan of Alfred Hitchcock because he could create so much suspense with just a look or a reaction or an emotion, and I think it's good to have that balance in there. But, yeah, when I'm thinking about the action scenes, often they're the final scenes I plan in the book. They're not the first ones, and I always try to do something that's, unique and original in the fight or in the in the action sequence that I haven't seen before. Um, and so that's always actually a big challenge, but they're often the final scenes because the characters have to get to that point where they're taking the action. It all has to come from their decisions, not just, okay, let's have a fist fight now, you know? So, uh, but yeah, and they're a lot of fun to write. They are. I just crank up the, the rock and roll really loud in my office and I write them, so I have fun with it. Well, Jeff, uh, I think that's fantastic. What is your ultimate goal with the books? Where do you want to see them? I guess you're already are doing pretty well. Do you see yourself continuing the series after three, or that's it? Uh, no. Do I see myself continuing with the series? Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. I I love writing Sam, and I don't think of uh, I've written a bunch of books before this one that had been successful, but I think that the the reader reaction to Sam is been so great that um, I would just want to keep writing his stories as long as I can, as long as people want to read them. Well, Jeff, I hear your passion, and I'm so glad for your success, and I'm glad that people are seeing it, that not just people who pick up books, but people that are going to be into your favorite films that you've watched your whole entire life finally being on the silver screen. Fantastic. And someday maybe we'll we'll be hearing more and more about Jeff in in many other areas as well. So where can our our listeners go ahead and purchase your book and meet you in Miami on uh, the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th in Miami, November? Where can we find info? Yeah, that'll be great. And you're very, you're very kind to talk to me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. So, where can we find information, Jeff, and purchase your book and stuff? Where can what website and everything? Oh, yeah, I have a website, jeffabbott.com. It has links uh, to all the books on there, and um, there are descriptions and excerpts of the books. Um, and I don't actually know my schedule yet in Miami, but I think they'll have that posted on the Miami Book Fair website soon. Oh, you know what? I love working with Lisa and everyone at the Miami Book Fair. And like I said, you guys are top-notch authors. I I learned my craft all year interviewing some very interesting award-winning authors. But when I get to those Book Fair authors, you guys take the cake for sure. So thanks again for calling and taking the time to talk to me. Thank you so much for having me today. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. You're listening to Author's Corner, and we'll be back in just a moment. 